And happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. We are so glad that you are here this morning. And I can't think of a better place to be on resurrection morning than in church and celebrating the risen Christ. He is risen. Yes, indeed he is. A reading from Mark chapter 16. Let's be standing as we read scripture and then we'll get ready to proclaim the fact that he lives. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you into Galilee, and there you will see him just as he told you. He lives, and we serve a risen Savior. So let's get started uh, with that song this morning. He lives. <clears throat> I serve a risen Savior in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives. Somebody else, happy Easter. Happy Easter, John. Awesome, awesome. All righty, you may be seated. We do want to welcome you today. Uh, what a beautiful day it is, and not only inside, but outside, and hopefully inside each of our hearts as well. This is a celebration of Christ uh, being raised from the dead, and that's what uh, our life is all about, and what Christianity is all about. So thank you for joining us here on this Easter Sunday. Thank you uh, for those of you that are out in the parking lot that are joining us as well. Uh, we had a chance to have a lot of people join us this morning out in the parking lot. In fact, we had 23 cars out there this morning uh, for our drive-in service and a little uh, special surprise there this morning and enjoyed that and then I had a nice Easter breakfast back there in the fellowship hall and thank you for everybody who participated in that and helped to make that happen. Uh, if you want to keep in mind we do have a little backdrop back there as well that talks about Easter 2021 at North Citrus. If you want to get your picture taken um, Sarah will be available right after the service to go back to the fellowship hall and there's a little backdrop you can get your picture taken back there as well and we'd love to have a, a picture for you that you can send out to friends and, and that we can have a record of so we'll mention that again at the end 
um, but th that's available right afterwards in the fellowship hall as well. So we encourage you to take advantage of that. If you are here visiting with us, perhaps for the first or second time, uh, we would love to have a record of your attendance. So if you could please fill out a welcome card, uh, you'll find that in the, uh, the pew pocket in front of you. Uh, those in the parking lot, that'll be in your bag. Uh, those at home, you're just going to have to let us know that you're, you're here, okay, somehow, some way. But we welcome all of you at home as well and that may be viewing online. I know sometimes there are circumstances that uh, prevent you from being here in person, and we want to let you know that you're just as much a part of this Easter uh, service uh, and as much as the rest of us that are here today. We welcome you as well. Uh, we want to encourage you um, to uh, continue uh, to, to be a help and support as we can. Uh, you've noticed the new parking lot. Today is the last opportunity to kind of give us a boost towards uh, finishing off the parking lot project. So we do have a, a challenge offering goal. Our Easter project goal is to uh, uh, finish that off completely. So if you can help with that today, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, those of you that are visiting, if you have those cards available, you can simply put those in the boxes on either side of the auditorium or in the back. That is also where our regular uh, tenders and members uh, give offerings on a regular basis. Uh, we do not pass the plate, so uh, we're not going to be passing the plate in front of you today, so you won't have to worry about, oh no, what do I, do? What I gotta do? We got to do? Well, that's between yourself and God, okay? Not the person next to you that's passing the plate next to you. We're not going to pass the plate this morning. So if you want to give something uh, back to God's church um, here at North Citrus, then we encourage you to do so. But again, you can do, just do that through the offering boxes on the side and in the back. So lots of things happening. I want to encourage you to take advantage of some of the things that are coming up. Uh, we have a uh, Wednesday night service uh, that is a Bible study, small group, studying the book of Romans at 6 o'clock. So that is this Wednesday, and everyone is welcome to be a part of that. So Wednesday night at 6, we encourage you to be a part of that. We have been waiting for some time uh, to make a, an announcement, and uh, I want to let you know uh, that we are going to be launching forward um, in, in May, near the end of May, into a whole new sermon series that will last us for a while. We've got a couple mini-series that we're going to be starting the next couple weeks, uh, 411 is uh, next week, and so we're going to be looking at um, uh, the 411 information on some hot topics in the Bible. So over the next couple weeks, so that's coming up. You won't want to miss that. Uh, if you ever want to learn about money, sex, and power, this is your opportunity. Okay, uh, so we'll be looking at those hot topics, the 411, over the next couple weeks. Then we're going to do a little mission emphasis on um, uh, our mission. Uh, no matter what, what, no matter where, we are on mission for God. But then starting at the end of May, we are starting a new series that will continue on uh, through the year on the characters of the Bible. Characters of the Bible. And so we are going to be taking a look at all the characters of the Bible, kind of hitting highlights as we work through, and that's going to be our sermon series going forward. So I wanted to announce that on Easter Sunday, so that's something to look forward to, and we'll have some Bible studies that will be in conjunction with that uh, moving forward. So they'll give you a chance to kind of uh, work your way through and looking at uh, various characters of the Bible and how their lessons apply to our lives as well. We're glad you're here, but most importantly, we're glad that God is here. If it were not for Jesus being raised from the dead on the third day, then folks, none of us would be here today. And our, our, our faith would be meaningless without the fact that Jesus is alive. And so let's celebrate that and let's give him the praise this morning uh, with a word of prayer. Father God, we come to you just now and we just lift up your holy name. Father, thank you. Thank you for having the wisdom to come down to this earth as a man to live a sinless life and to take our sins upon you, to die upon the cross so that we might have life. And Lord, not just the death, uh, the burial, but thank God, the resurrection. Lord, thank you for showing us the way out and showing us the way forward through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, we pray that you be with those this morning that are unable to be with us in person. And we want to encourage them uh, over online as well. 
And Lord, we just continue to look to you and pray, God, grow your church as we move from this, uh, this uh, day forward. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I was outside this morning. It was really cold. And then the sun rose, warmed everything up, made such a glorious day outside.
has provided the way. And if it wasn't for Jesus providing the way out, we will never find our way forward. And we have such a rich history looking back upon the cross of Christ, looking back upon his death, his burial, and thank God his resurrection. And if it were not for God and his wisdom, providing a way out of sin and death, then none of us would have any hope. And so we give praise to Jesus, and as we come around this communion table, we remember his death upon the cross, and we remember the significance of his body, the significance of his blood, and how it has created a New Testament agreement between God and man, that now we find our hope and we find our way through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Well, folks, that's wonderful. There is no better message. In fact, it's called the gospel message because it means good news. And I can give you good news today because of what uh, Jesus has done upon the cross and the love that God has shared for each and every one of us. He has provided a way out, and God has provided a way where there seems to be no way. In fact, he is the way maker, and Jesus himself says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to God the Father but through me. That's the good news. I do have some bad news. I probably should have asked you first whether you wanted the bad news or the good news first, right? You ever wonder, notice when somebody says, I have good news and I have bad news, the, the bad news really isn't as bad as it really could be, but then the good news is never as good either. So I don't know why we even do that. The bad news is, even though God has provided a way, and even though that's very clear through the cross of Christ, 
Here we are 2,000 years later, and many people have chosen their own way. Many people have kind of pushed aside the way of the cross. Many people have pushed aside uh, uh, things that uh, are of no concern to, to God, but is only a concern to them. So what am I saying? I, I'm saying that there's potential good news for everyone to uh, come to understand uh, the way through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, there's definitely good news to be had there. Um, but as we take a look at where we are today, ultimately, and I want you to catch this, ultimately what you do from this point forward is going to be dependent upon you. Now, Jonathan, what, what do you say? You, you mean what took place upon the cross is not that? No, 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 no. I'm not saying that that's not important. That, that, that is of utmost importance. But I'm saying that if you don't choose to embrace the Christ who died upon the cross, then that cross means nothing to you. And Jesus' death was in vain. But if you choose to embrace, if you choose to believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and, and choose to, to repent and, and confess him and be baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, then that cross means everything. I love uh, the Old Testament prophet of Isaiah. And I want to read a scripture to you from Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21. And it says these words. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. This is the way. Walk in it. Folks, if you want the death of Jesus Christ upon the cross to mean something, then we need to embrace the way. And we need to realize that in 2021, we have a way before us, and it is our responsibility to walk in it. It's our responsibility now to take the way forward and to walk in it and be pleasing to him because that's what's going to make a difference today in today's world. Now, it's all based upon the cross of Christ, okay? By all means, that's the most important event in all of history, his death, burial, and resurrection. But what counts from this point forward is what we do with the time we have. So I want to encourage you, and I want to challenge you this morning. As you take communion, I want you to think about your own way in life. Have you chosen the way of the cross? Or are you perhaps going another way, another direction, and in, in essence making the death of Jesus Christ worthless when it's everything as you take communion today as you reflect upon the body of Christ reflect upon the blood of Christ reflect too upon the responsibility we have before us for this is the way now walk in it let's pray Father, I pray for wisdom. Lord, there is just so much going on in, in the world around us, perhaps in our own families, friends, at work, neighbors, even within, our, even within ourselves. Sometimes it seems like we fight against ourselves sometimes. We know the way. We know what we need to do. We know the right way to path. We know the path, that's, but yet we choose otherwise. Scripture says that's like crucifying Christ all over again. Father, help us to know the way, that this is the way, and then help us to walk in it. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
has held the oceans in his hands? Who has numbered every grain of sand? Kings and nations tremble at his voice. All creation rises to rejoice. Behold our God seated on his throne. Come, let us adore him. Behold our King, nothing can compare. Come, let us adore him. Who has given counsel? to the Lord who can question any of his words who can teach the one who knows all things who can fathom all his wondrous deeds behold our God seated on his throne come let us adore sinful man God eternal humble to the grave Jesus Savior risen now to reign sing with me behold our God seated on his throne come let us adore him behold our King nothing I expected you to be here. I didn't know you'd be so good looking. <laughs> I'll take care of before the message. 
Uh, one is, uh, I want to thank everyone who have already made this a very special Easter from the service outside to the breakfast and to what's going on up here, sound people, people that put the stuff on the screen. I sat there a little bit ago and I said to myself, Pastor, you are in a working church. And this is a church full of workers and a church full of spirit and a church full of lovers of Christ. Now this morning at the drive-in service, we had a visit from a biblical character, Joseph of Arimathea. He is uh, the fellow who approached Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. And he and another man named Nicodemus took the body down from the cross and prepared it for burial. I didn't know that that guy looked a lot like Jonathan. <laughs> and, and, he, and he looked at the vehicles and he said, I like your donkeys. And I was confused because I didn't know if he was talking about the cars or the people in the cars. <laughs> well done, brother. Well done. <laughs> All right, we're going to get started here. I'd like to start out by telling you a personal story. Years ago, when Brenda and I were first married and we were young and adventurous. We were the proud owners of a Volkswagen Beetle convertible, actually. And we took some day trips in that car around West Virginia and Eastern Kentucky, Southeast Ohio. On one remarkable trip, we forded a stream, crossed a railroad to get to uh, what would be called the downtown section of a small community in it that consisted of a post office and a general store, three houses. And, and we knew where we wanted to go. And I went in the store and asked for directions. And the man who was in the store behind the counter said, uh, you have to go through the tunnel. And I said, what tunnel might that be? He said, that one right out there. And that was it. The railroad tunnel. And I said, surely not. That's the railroad tunnel. He said, that it is. But the train is not due to come through there for an hour and a half. <laughs> we went back out in the car and sat down. <laughs> Thought about this for a little bit. It was a long tunnel. When you entered, you couldn't see the light on the other end. But we took our chance. Proof of it is that we're here today. <laughs> you meet some interesting people as you go along in life. That fellow was one of them. Another time, a friend, and my, a friend of mine and I were in eastern Kentucky, and we were uh, exercising his beagle dogs, preparing for hunting season, for rabbit season. And we kind of got turned around and got lost. And we wanted to find our way to uh, Naugatuck. Some of you may know where Naugatuck is. So uh, we were going along this country road and he said, well, there's, there's a girl here, pull up and we'll ask this young lady how to get to Naugatuck. So I pulled up, put the window down and I said, could you tell us how to get to Naugatuck? She said, you can't get there from here. I said, I can't get there from here? She said, no, but if you go over to Songbird Holler, you can get there from there. Now, that's what you run into, see? Interesting people along the path or the road of life. That can happen to you. And so it is in your journey of life. You will run into all sorts of people. And here's what I mean. You will have some adventures along the way. 
some of which can be scary. You'll meet all sorts of folks. Some of us even will meet or have met Jesus along this road of life, this path that we follow. But I have a question. Is it possible for anyone to meet him and even walk with him and not recognize him? Well, yes, it is. We know that from Scripture because that happened to a couple of friends as they walked along one Sunday towards a little town called Emmaus on that first Resurrection Sunday. And I would like for you to open your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, please. I'm not putting this on the screen. We need to open your Bible and read with me as I read from Luke chapter 24. I'll give you a little chance to, to get oriented there and find the passage. We're going to start reading at verse 13. This is the famous Road to Emmaus passage. And this happened the day that Jesus came up out of the grave. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us when he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Now if I ask everyone assembled here today, if you know Jesus, there will be a lot of hands raised, a lot of hands. Okay, so let's assume you are going to tell me that you know Jesus. Then how is it that you recognize him? Do you recognize him as the good shepherd? That's what he said. John 10, 14 and 15, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. And my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. We should find it very interesting, folks, that Jesus said those people who belong to him know him. Not only is he the shepherd that knows us, but we 
if we belong to him, know him. I like this picture. But as far as our knowing him goes, what does that tell us? If I don't know him, then I do not belong to him. It's just that simple. And let me point out something that may not be known by everybody. When we know him, really know him, then we trust him and we trust him with our very lives and with our very souls. So you can ask this question of yourself this morning. Do I really believe that Jesus is the good shepherd and that I trust him? Well, that's a matter of faith, isn't it? And let me tell you a story about faith, about trust, absolute trust. A physics professor at a university was teaching about what is known as the law of the pendulum. Now, I'm sure everyone here is real familiar with the law of the pendulum, right? No, they didn't teach you that in school, did they? All right, we're going to learn a little bit about it. The law of the pendulum. It says that when a pendulum swings back and forth, the length of each swing grows smaller, less. So if it starts here and it swings over to here, the next one will be a little less and a little less and a little less and a little less until eventually, unless with some mechanical input or electronic input, it will hang straight down having spent all of its energy. And so once started, it will never again reach the starting point. Here, this will interest some of you engineers. There you are. But to illustrate the law of the pendulum, the professor nailed a rope to the wall just above the blackboard, and he attached a baseball to it. And next, he asked the students if they really believed in the law, and they all raised their hands and said, yes, we do. And with that, he pulled the rope to one side and marked the chalk mark on the blackboard, let it go, and when it came back, he marked another chalk mark. When it came back, he marked another, and it was easily seen that the law of the pendulum holds true. Now, where in the world am I going with this? They all said, oh, yeah, we see it and we believe it. So he said, all right, we're, we're all going to go into the auditorium, the university auditorium, and he had hung from the rafters a long rope, and on the end of this rope was a 100-pound piece of steel. And he got a volunteer, sat him in the chair, and pulled that piece of steel right up about two inches from his face. And he said, now, do you believe in the law of the pendulum? Well, yes, yes, Professor, I do then you know when this comes back, it's not going to hit you in the face. Yes, I believe that. I know that. I know it's true. I believe it. So the kid sat there. Professor let it go. It went way out. And when it came back, boy, it was a picking up speed. <laughs> it looked bad. <laughs> and the guy that was talking about this incident said, you never saw a kid bail out of a chair as fast as that guy left his. So the question is, did he really believe in the law or did he not, just sort of believed in it? So here's another question. Are you one of God's little lambs? Are you among the sheep of his pasture or are you not? See, you can be, but for this to happen, you have to have a believing heart. And you have to know him as the good shepherd. Trust, trust, faith, trust. Know him as the good shepherd. Now as you go along the road in life, maybe you will recognize him as the Lamb of God. There's a picture. John the Baptist was preaching. He was baptizing in the wilderness. And he looked up one morning and saw Jesus coming towards him and recognizing him. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Well, do you believe that? 
Are you one of those believers? See, you should be because it's true. Jesus is called the Lamb of God because he gave his life as a perfect sacrificial lamb in order to wipe out our sins. Now, here's the thing. If you do not know Jesus as that sacrificial lamb, you will be so filled with joy to find out that it's true that the sufferings of this life will pale in comparison to the joy you have. And you'll start to count your blessings. And sometimes the all of everything that's wrong with you and on the darkest day that you have, you can still count your blessings. I read about a guy named Jack Hinton who went on a short-term mission trip to the island of Tobago. And he went down there and he's leading music in a worship service and of all things, a leper colony. Leper colony. If you've ever seen anyone with leprosy in its advanced stages, you will wish that you had not seen them. So he asked for the people to shout out for their favorite songs. That's what song leaders do sometimes. We used to do that here. It, we had a great time doing it. We might start that again someday. So after the people sang several songs, Jack said, look, uh, we have just enough time for one more song, one more request. Who would it be? And he said there was a lady whose back had been turned to him the whole service. Now this is unusual. Her back turned to him the whole service. She turned around and he said her nose was gone. Her ears were eaten away. Her lips were missing. And he said she held up a hand with no fingers. And she said, can we sing Count Your Many Blessings? Yeah, it was too much for him. He had to leave the service. He was overcome with emotion. Later, another volunteer said, well, I guess you'll never be able to sing that song again, Jack. Oh, yes, I will, he said, but I'll never sing it the same way again. So as you continue on your lifelong journey, will you or have you recognized him as the crucified Savior? I love that song, Were You There When They Crucified My Lord? It's a beautiful, beautiful hymn. Some preachers say that when Jesus was on the cross, he had us on his mind. I don't know about that, but I do know that he knows your name. He knows your name. And this is from Scripture. But now, thus says the Lord, your Creator, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. In the fall of 1993, Brenda and I found ourselves in a place called Braintree, Massachusetts. You know where it is, Braintree. I was doing some consulting work there. And one day after driving around the area, we decided we better get to a grocery store to pick up some toothpaste and other items, or at least, if not a grocery store, a drug store, and we hadn't seen any. So uh, it was evening, and almost immediately we spotted a little pizza shop in a strip center. <laughs> And I said, well, why don't we just get something to eat and we'll get directions in there and find out where a grocery store is. So we went in and ordered the pizza and, and I said, uh, and look, uh, I said, uh, uh, by the way, this, this man was a Greek. He had a very strong accent, very strong. And I said, now that we've ordered the pizza, could you tell us where to find a grocery store? Surely you have grocery stores around here, don't you? He said, yes, we have grocery stores here, just like you have in Huntington, West Virginia. I couldn't believe it. I never saw this guy in my life. I stepped back about two steps, and I said, now I know there's a story here, and I'm going to hear it. 
He said, the story is that for two years I managed a pizza shop across from Huntington East High School and you sound like one of them. <laughs> and here I didn't think I had an accent. <laughs> well, all right. So here we are. This guy knew us just by speaking. Now he didn't know our names, but he knew where we were from just by the sound of our voice, our accent. Think about this. I have called you by name. You are mine, says God. Jesus said that even the very hairs of your head are numbered. And you think he doesn't know your name? Come on. Next and last, I hope and pray that each and every one of you know him as the risen Christ because he is alive. He did come up out of that grave, you know. If you don't know him as the risen Christ, my prayer for you is that somewhere along your journey of life, you will meet him. And I give you a personal guarantee. Once you meet Jesus as the risen Christ, your life will never be the same. There's a retired preacher, his name is uh, Bruce Ball, and he says, you know what? He says, we're like a, a, a bunch of ducks in Duckville, USA. Duckville. I never heard of Duckville. But he said, yeah, Duckville. We get up every Sunday morning and we waddle all the way down to the church. And there we are in church, ready to go in. We get in church, we get excited by what we hear, and we flap our wings and and we clack our beaks, and then we go outside and we all waddle back home, just like we were before, unchanged, unchanged, no change. And he said, you know what? Then we come back and do it next week, and the week after that, and we're not changed. One of you sitting out here this morning mentioned the shallowness of the American Christian church. And I made this statement. The American church, for the greater part, is as wide as a river and about six inches deep. Because for the greater part, the American church has failed to preach the whole gospel. It's failed to give warnings. And it has failed to assure you of salvation if you follow Jesus. This is not a social gospel. This is the gospel that saves people from going to everlasting hell. And this is the risen Christ who is your guarantee of rising up and living with him forever on the day that you leave this place. And this is important. If you know Jesus is the risen Christ, none of that stuff's going to happen to you. Oh, you'll come to church, all right, and you'll be excited, and you may wave your arms around, and you'll say your amens, but you will be changed. And where you go, and what you say, and what you do, and the people you associate with will never be the same because you will follow the living Christ and you can have that in your life. Trust Him. Know Him. Follow Him. For He is real. And He's not just some nebulous figure up on a cloud somewhere. He is the living Christ. And he knows your name. And you know, I like that song. I came up out of that grave. He called my name and I came up out of that grave. Oh, wow. Now let me finish. Jesus knew you long before he went to the cross. He knew you as a baby in Bethlehem. He knew you in the Garden of Gethsemane during his passion 
When he was being tortured, he knew you. When he hung there, he knew you. And he knows you now as he sits at the right hand of God the Father. And you know what he wants? He wants you to know him. He wants me to know him. He wants us to know him. Oh, I pray that we do. I pray that we do. Now would you pray with me? Lord God, on this Resurrection Sunday, as we celebrate our Lord Jesus coming up out of the grave by that wonderful power that you possess, we know that the future lies for us of our coming up out of the grave. We know, Lord God, that you can put broken bodies back together Bodies burn beyond recognition. You can restore them, not just like they were, but we will be made better with heavenly bodies, immortal bodies, bodies that do not fail. And we look forward to that day. Hallelujah. We look forward to that day. Now, Lord God, bless everyone within the sound of my voice. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. It's an opportunity for us to choose the way and to move forward and to walk in it. And I want to challenge you today again, before you leave this place, I want you to look at your own personal relationship uh, with Jesus Christ. And if you have not firmed that up, um, I can't think of a better day to do that than today. Um, to uh, take that step forward and say, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and to repent, to turn from your past sins, and to turn toward him, and confess, say, I, I'm making him Lord of my life. He's in charge now. <laughs> and to, uh, to, to show that by being immersed into Christ and receive the forgiveness of sins and likeness of his death, burial, and resurrection. We encourage you to take that step forward and to do that today. At, at some point, you have to choose a now moment. And uh, now's the time. Um, it, it's not always some point in the future. You have to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this now. And so this is your opportunity to do that this morning and to choose uh, the way. Perhaps you've already taken those steps. Uh, perhaps you're here in the area and you decide, you know, I'm looking for a home church. We've been coming for a while and we want to make this our home church. Uh, then you can step forward too. And by all means, we'll, uh, we'll welcome you with open arms. Let's be standing as we sing together the way of the cross leads home. I must needs go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way but this. I shall never get sight of the gates of life if the way of the cross I miss. The way. The cross leads home, the whole way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as I onward go, the way of the cross leads home. Then I bid farewell to the way of the world to walk in it. says come and I seek my home where he waits at the open door the way of the cross leads home the way of the cross leads home it is sweet to know as I onward go Just a couple notes before we leave today. Again, a reminder, anybody who would like a picture taken with a backdrop, we encourage you to do that back in the fellowship hall. Sarah will be available back there uh, to take your picture and to have a memory of this day. Um, second of all, I'm also thinking about the Easter lilies. They're all spoken for. So if you have spoken for one of the Easter lilies, 
and you have paid your $10 to, uh, to, to make that reservation, those are available after service. They are either the purple or the gold. The blue stay here. They're fake, okay? <laughs> but the, for those of you who have spoken for your Easter lilies, those are available after the service, either the purple or the gold to take home with you. Okay, George. What a blessing to serve you. And what a blessing to have you here in this place. Now I want to ask God to watch over you carefully. And so, Father, that is our prayer. That on this Resurrection Sunday, everyone here within the sound of my voice, people out there in their homes listening, watching, will know what a tremendous and wonderful fact it is that our Lord Jesus Christ came up out of the grave and that we don't serve some God that was, but we serve the God that is, the God that will be. And Father, I ask that for each and every person, you watch over us carefully. Keep us from harm, Lord. Watch over our coming in and our going out and give us that special blessing that only you can give. We thank you for this being a family, a family of believers, and a wonderful family it is. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Right, let's end with that chorus, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Happy Easter, everybody.